friends, and welcome back to Technology Now, a weekly show from Hewlett Packard Enterprise where we take what's happening in the world and explore how it's changing the way organizations are using technology. I'm one of your hosts, Aubrey Lovell, and I'm holding down the fort alone in the studio today because Michael has been out and about doing something pretty special. He's been trackside at the London e Prix, the final race of the 2023 Formula E Championship. Super jealous. He's been spending time with the Maserati MSG racing team, interviewing driver Ido Mortara and team principal James Rossiter. If you're the kind of person who needs to know why what's going on in the world matters to your organization, this podcast is for you. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to your podcast app of choice so you don't miss out. All righty, to London. Well, hello, Aubrey, and I'm coming to you from the Excel Conference Center in London, where just over a month ago, where I'm standing right now, was hosting a tech conference. Today, can you believe it? The arena has been transformed into a racetrack for the London e Rounds 15 and 16 of the ninth season of Formula E, the world's first fully electric racing series. A little bit more on that later. So the start finish, pits and a few of the corners of the circuit uh, run right through this massive indoor convention hall where I'm standing right now and then blasts out into the daylight for the rest of the course around the Royal Victoria docks. Honestly, it is a sight to behold. So today we're here to talk about the racing, the technology, the competition, what it all represents and what we can learn to take back to our organizations. I'll throw some stats at you, but first off, just listen to this noise. So, Formula E, the series started in 2014 and now they are in their ninth season. This year has had 16 races across 11 cities and by the time you listen to this, the season will have concluded right here in London. Now, Formula E is a spec series, which means all 11 teams and 22 drivers use essentially the same cars, now in their third generation and featuring 350 kilowatt powertrains and reaching top speeds of up to 200 miles per hour. Now, there's relatively little, technologically speaking, between them, so it's mostly down to setup, skill, teamwork, strategy to gain your competitive advantage. And that is where our guests come in today. Earlier on, I spoke to Maserati MSG's driver, Edo Mortara, and team principal, James Rossiter. Who are you? What do you do? Who do you work for? So my name is Eduardo Mortara. I'm um, one of the two racing drivers for the Maserati MSG racing team. I've been racing for the team uh, since season four, so the last six years. Wow. Achieving some more or less good results. I'm James Rossiter. I'm the team principal of Maserati MSG Racing, Formula E team. So I've been team principal for 10 months now. How have you found it so far? Baptism of fire, okay. uh, in all honesty. I mean, to give a bit, little bit of a background on myself, I was a racing driver for 20 years. And uh, my goal was always to, to become a team principal and to be able to give back to the sport that's given me my entire career and my life and be able to do it with, uh, with passion, enthusiasm and excitement. So uh, to be here as a team principal is uh, uh, a huge achievement for me in my career. There was definitely uh, a lot of things that I wasn't really expecting to be so challenging that turned out to be extraordinarily challenging. There were also some things that turned out to be much easier. So it was about finding this balance between you know, using the experience I had and then using the opportunity to learn through new challenges and really ha changing my mindset a bit to embrace the unknown and put myself in difficult situations and, and force myself to evolve and learn and, and grow. So it's been a bit of a year of changes, uh, new car, new title sponsor, new team principal. How have you found all the changes? How have you been adapting to those changes? It's been extremely complicated. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's not been an easy year for me. As you said, like many things changed and um, I was coming from a situation that uh, I kind of like know new, sorry, and um, with a car that um, we did race with the Gen 2 car for the last four years. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, a lot of things changed um, since the, the beginning of the season. We had to adapt quite a lot, but thanks to the team and thanks to, to the engineers, we managed to do quite some work and managed actually to, we, we're starting to turn things around uh, quite nicely now. What's been the biggest lesson that you've learned this year? 
Yeah, the biggest change that we had was changing from the Gen 2 car to the Gen 3 car. Yeah. So completely uh, different car, different philosophy. The, the car is lighter, more, more powerful. We have like different tires. Different tires means that as drivers, we need to have also different driving styles. Yeah. And yeah, and uh, that is working, yeah, more or less good with the driving style that, I've, that you were having, you know, in the, in the past years. Yeah. Uh, I had to adapt quite a lot because my one was probably not, not fitting so well, you know, to the car that we were uh, having, you know, at the beginning of the year. But as I said, you know, we, um, we did a lot, a lot of progress and uh, I'm starting to feel actually pretty comfortable and uh, yeah. confident for the future. I've got a bit of a unique insight into the car because I actually did all the initial development as wow. a driver on, oh, really? on the Gen 3 car, oh, wow. yes, okay. for, for Stellantis, for Maserati. So I was the first person to ever drive the, the Gen 3 car for them. I've driven the Gen 1 car, the Gen 2 car, and, and the Gen 3 car. So having that insight into, into what was required from the, the car, the team, things like that, over the process of the development of the car allowed me, I think, to help integrate with the engineering staff with this side of the business, it was very easy. More complicated to adapt to the marketing side and things like that, which I'd been you know, open to as a driver, but not really understanding the, the full gravity of the situation inside the, the commercial department, um, the communications department, what goes on behind the scenes. So there was a lot of unknowns, I'd say, coming into this Gen 3 era, mm. but it's been a very exciting time and exciting to see the development of new technology really being pushed hard informally. Because we've gone from a it's much more powerful powertrain, isn't it? Much more powerful powertrain. However, that's not been the biggest complexity. I'd say the biggest complexity is the addition of the FPK, which is the front powertrain, having four-wheel braking, which is completely controlled by the software, where you really need some very smart people working on the software in the background. We have an amazing relationship with HPE that really contribute actively to that. The amount of data that needs to be processed quickly over a race weekend as well. This has just gone up exponentially over, over the last couple of years. So having all of that behind the scenes really allows us to perform on track. What would you say has been the quickest lesson that you've had to learn in the last 10 months? Oh, I, d I would say, you know, I understand from my career how I deal with difficulties. Understanding how every individual in a team deals with their difficulties how in the face of adversity, everyone needs a different level of support. Some people can deal with it very well, some people can't. And as a leader of a team, you really need to have that human touch, that, that slight delicacy to how you manage everyone and just jumping in and making sure that every single person is, is okay with what they're going through. And everyone's experiencing life differently and how to pull everyone together and really empower the team making sure that you're empowering every single individual in the team is really what gives you success. In a field where the cars are quite similar, how do you find your competitive advantage? Like, how do you make sure you're faster than the other teams? So I would say that the cars are looking similar, but they are actually uh, very different. We as teams and manufacturers, we have our own, let's say, concepts that we are developing for softwares and hardwares. And um, effectively, even if the cars are actually looking quite similar, there are actually quite a lot of differences really? yeah, in terms of efficiency and how you operate you know, the cars. And as a team and as a driver, in order to have a um, you know, competitive uh, um, advantage compared to the others, a competitive edge, let's say, it's, it's very important to master the little details. Everything yeah, yeah. is about details in, uh, in motorsport, especially in Formula E. When you can do that, normally you're probably more competitive than, you, than the others. Understanding how to improve efficiency over a 45 minute, 45, 50 minute race where you're looking for tenths of a second per lap and your software can actually give you a huge amount. This yeah. is one thing that we realized in the, in the past informally, but it's become more and more and more the focus of, of a competitive advantage. Yeah. And that's really where the direct relationship with Hewlett Packard Enterprises brings us a real performance thing. I mean, we have our data center back at our offices and, and our factory in Monaco that allows us to process huge amounts of data quickly, allows us to send information back from the racetrack real time, have the guys in the, in the remote room also analyzing it and give us real performance advantages yeah. on track over the course of a race weekend. That's where the competitive advantage lies and that's where you know, your partners are so important and critical to your success. Yeah. Absolutely incredible. We're going to throw it back to Aubrey in the studio in a little bit. But first, I just wanted to give you a sense of what it sounds like around here.
That's fantastic. Sounds like so much fun. Thanks so much, Michael. We'll come back to you in a moment. So don't go anywhere and enjoy the racing. Next up, it's down to you, our audience. We open the floor for you to give your recommendations on books which have changed the way you look at the world, life, and business in the last 12 months. They could be technology-based, they could have changed the way you work, or they could have just made you look at the world in a totally different way. And as usual, if you want to share your recommendations, there's a link in the podcast description. Just record a voice note on your phone and send it over. I'm Colin Eby. I am a volunteer at the National Museum of Computing. I'll be honest and, and, and say that I love reading for just escape. The best book I've read in the last couple of years and stays with me and I, I occasionally reread it, it's Thomas Pynchon's Inherent Vice. It's basically a, a mystery novel set in 1970. And it's just a, a haze of semi-coherent plot twists and evocations of the time. It made into a, a particularly good movie by Paul Thomas Anderson as well. That's a fun escape on a totally different strand. Um, I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head, but it's by Professor Mick Aston, famous from Time Team, looking at the archaeological history of a village and giving you a perspective of how you know human history is compiled in time into the, the landscape and into the sort of invisible fabric around us. Thanks for that. Right. Now it's time to head back to London, where we rejoin Michael interviewing Maserati MSG's driver, Ido Mortara, and team principal, James Rossiter. But before we do, Michael, I know you're a huge racing fan. What is it about Formula E that gets you excited? Well, uh, for me, Aubrey, firstly, it's the exciting elbows out racing. That's uh, a polite way of saying there's a bit of knocking and parching. The cars are so closely matched and the courses are so tight that sometimes a little nudge gets you that advantage, which is great fun. Last season, some of the teams kept having their nose cameras knocked off due to the uh, robust racing. Plus, you know, particularly in this enclosed space, the noise is incredible. Okay, so time to head back to my interview from earlier with James and Edo. I wanted to ask them about what they're gonna be doing next. How has your season been so far? <laughs> my season has not been good. A lot of things happen, but I must say, that if I look back to where we were and to where we are now, we still made quite some significant steps forward. Yeah, and yeah. Um, unfortunately, now we are at the end of the season, but I, I hope you know, to have the chance to be racing again with, with the team uh, on a fresh new year, because I believe that uh, this season has taught us so many things and we, uh, we will be able to use it to be a, a lot better you know, next year. How are you going to be using the off season? I think that it's going to be important for uh, for everyone to uh, kind of like take a break, yeah, have a little bit of vacations, and then go back to what happened this year in in order to try to spot what we have to to do better for next yeah, year. Yeah, for the next you know few months before we move into season ten, do you go back, analyze the data, make changes to the way that you do things as a team? This year we've we've made a lot of adaptations as a team to try and find the performance that was missing from the beginning of the season. Mm. Uh, I think we scored something like three points in the first six races uh, and then we've scored know, like a, a hundred points in the last uh, yeah. six races. So we've certainly managed to analyze everything, turn it around. We've, we've made changes. Um, you know, there's been changes made in the structure of the engineering team. We've been changes made in, in all areas really of the team because this Gen 3 had different requirements, to be honest, in the past. One of the big things that we've already started on the management side is going through positives and negatives, what we can yeah. do better in the future, you know, facing the reality of the situations, how we can really build ourselves into, into champions. Yeah. You know, that's the goal here. So what changes will need to be made in, in the pre-season to make sure that we hit the ground running uh, in October for the pre-season test and then we have a couple of months to get ready for Mexico next January. Wow, what a brilliant interview. And I just wanted to say a huge thanks to the team for helping us put this episode together. Next week, we're going to be heading back to the track to speak to Harry Richards, commercial director at MSG Maserati, to hear how they as a business and sport are tackling sustainability. So that's it from me for now. Time to head back to Aubrey in the studio. Right. Well, we're getting towards the end of the show, which means it's time for... 
This week in history, a look at monumental events in the world of business and technology, which has changed our lives. The clue last week was, it's 1898, let's get this party motoring. It was, of course, and highly inappropriately, the invention of the internal combustion engine patented this week in 1898 by Rudolf Diesel. After a decade or so of design efforts to create an engine capable of replacing steam, Diesel built and tested his device, and the patent was granted, allowing him to go into worldwide production. The rest, as they say, is history. And today, we've been looking at the future. Next week, the clue is happy birthday to us. <gasps> we should get cupcakes. That brings us to the end of Technology Now for this week. Keep those suggestions for life-changing books coming using the link in the podcast description. And in the meantime, thank you to our guests, Maserati MSG driver, Ido Mortara, and team principal, James Rossiter. And to our listeners, thank you all so much for joining us. Technology Now is hosted by Michael Bird and myself, Aubrey Level. This episode was produced by Sam Data Pollen and Zoe Anderson with production support from Harry Morton, Alicia Kempson, Allison Paisley, Camilla Patel, Alyssa Mitri, and Alex Podmore. Technology Now is a Lower Street production for Hewlett Packard Enterprise. We'll see you next week. Cheers. Cheers.